A massive thank you to Simon, Rappelton, Baker, Mia and RJ the Gamer for subscribing to the channel. If you want to be featured in these clips, make sure you subscribe down below. Hello everyone and welcome back guys to a brand new video. But today we're here back with round 9 of Season 2 of our F1 2021 My Team Career Mode. Of course, if you missed out yesterday's race from the British Grand Prix, make sure you go back, check it out as well. Of course, you don't want to miss that one. Very, very dramatic scenes from Silverstone. So yeah, I won't leave you guys uh, with any more spoilers than that. But heading though to the Hungarian Grand Prix, of course, final race before the summer break. So fingers crossed we can try and get the last few upgrades on the car. We do have quite a few R&D points at the moment as well. So can we try and go with any more upgrades? The fuel tank positioning should be done ready for the Grand Prix. Uh, we can go with the DRS maximum slot gap as well, for 1,155 points. That should be ready for Belgium. Uh, so hopefully, yeah, we've got a couple of big upgrades in ready for the second half of the year there. We'll need to do some more durability upgrades as well, actually, uh, before I forget. Uh, we'll go with the MG UK reliability testing as well. Though. That actually will only be ready for the Dutch Grand Prix. So more and more upgrades in the works at the moment there. You can see four more upgrades currently going on to the car. Championship-wise, though, Hamilton's still dominant out front there. What's that? 65 points clear at this stage of the year. He's he's just in a different league. It's it's a case of when Hamilton bags title number five rather than if at this stage of the championship. There's still a mega battle going on uh, between both McLarens, the Red Bull of Verstappen there, the Ferraris, and Yuki Tsunoda as well as we try and stay with these guys there. We're also really, really close with Aston Martin in the battle for P5 in the Constructors' Championship as well there. Uh, we need to take some grid penalties as well this weekend. Unfortunately, our second energy store uh, is far too worn out now. 69% there. Nice, love that. Uh, we're going to have to put another one of those on the car ready for the Belgian Grand Prix. We also need to go with our... Uh, sorry, the Control Electronics there, our energy store as well. We need to get another one of those on the car as well there and probably a new ICE uh, if we're taking grid penalties anyway. A turbocharger, that should be absolutely fine though. Uh, let's just make sure all these upgrades get on the car then ready for this weekend's Grand Prix. Fingers crossed of course, yeah, we can try and get these last couple of upgrades in ready for the summer break and of course not. We had a major issue on the production line earlier this week, so the entire development package for this weekend has failed. Any redevelopments will need to be ordered from the R&D screen. Should I even be surprised anymore at this stage of the game? And uh, we don't even have enough R&D points uh, to get that sorted as well there, of course. We, we probably need to make sure the upgrades have worked uh, before we go and, uh, you know, sort of apply more ready for these races. We have got a bit more money though now, so we can hopefully go with another facility upgrade if we're lucky. Uh, we might have to be powertrain coming to build time. Yeah, there we go. Build time reduced by 40%. Uh, leaves us with very little money in the bank. Uh, but we have obviously got a couple more races before we have to renegotiate Schwartzman's contract. Uh, but yeah, we've got some grid penalties. So we'll be starting from the back anyway, most likely. Let's dive into the Hungarian Grand Prix. So heading into free practice then for the Hungarian Grand Prix, just to confirm, yeah, 10 places worth of grid penalties will mean we are going to just start from the back of the field here. Not the easiest track to overtake on, of course, the Hungarian Grand Prix, but not worth putting the extra stress through the engine uh, because there's probably going to be a lot more penalties towards the end of the year as well. Their durability and reliability has not been perfect over a big part of this season. It's certainly something we need to look to if, you know, we want to be making a title challenge next year perhaps, but we'll wait and see about that just yet but fingers crossed you know the Hungarian Grand Prix circuit not one I enjoy a lot but hopefully it'll provide a good race this weekend just like it did in real life to a, to a certain degree I suppose a memorable race actually failed our first lap here in free practice but we are going to get the green score on lap two You've nailed what we asked for. Keep it up. that's what we like to see very very difficult balance to find this weekend as well of course we need to have a car that can overtake but we need a car that's quick Great lap. You've nailed what we asked for. Keep it up. There's the race simulation run all done and dusted. We'll do the other couple behind the scenes, get that last upgrade on the car that we need to, and let's dive into the race. It's race day in Budapest as we get ready for another round of the Formula One World Championship. 
We don't expect too many retirements at this track. There are plenty of current and former drivers with flawless finish rates here. In particular, Ralf Schumacher. He made it across the line in all 10 of his Hungarian Grand Prix starts. We're northeast of Budapest for the race today at the 2.7 mile Hungaro Ring circuit. 14 corners here, eight to the right and six to the left on a track where downforce is king and passing is notoriously difficult. Now, Anthony Davidson, I wonder, might we be in for some early pit stops today for the midfield teams, all trying to put some pressure on or disrupting things for the leaders up front? If you're in the middle of the pack, you know, you've got your own race to run, I don't think they're going to be thinking about causing trouble up front. However, closer to the head of the pack, don't be surprised to see some split strategies. If you're running second and third, for example, bringing one car in for an undercut while leaving the other one out there longer can put a lot of pressure on the leader and maybe force them into an error. It's time to see how our drivers are stacking up after yesterday's exciting qualifying session. An immense lap from Lewis Hamilton yesterday puts him on pole position and Max Verstappen lines up alongside. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Leclerc, Sonoda, Carlos Sainz, and Ricardo, Russell, Norris, Perez, and Pierre Gasly, Stroll, Fernando Alonso, Esteban Ocon, and Schwartzman, Joe, Bottas, Christian Lundgaard, and Antonio Giovinazzi, Latifi, Mazepin, Mick Schumacher, and Mr. Monaco. It's almost time for those five red lights to go out. Then let's see who can prevail today. So it would appear we were the only car then with grid penalties at the end of qualifying. But Schwartzman, some encouraging pace this weekend. Not out in Q1 for the first time in a couple of races while there. I don't know what's happened to the car over the last couple of weeks. Why we both seem to struggle so much over one lap pace. But the Hungarian Grand Prix here today, I think the aim is just to go really long in the first stint there. Maybe we'll get a safety car later on or something like that. So we'll go with the hard medium strategy. Try and take them to about lap 20 and then go mediums to the end, of course. So we're probably going to be sat in a lot of traffic over the course of today, so we need to be aggressive on that one. Try and make up a few spots there. Maybe, maybe some heroics. Um, not not Bottas-style heroics, but some heroics nonetheless down towards turn one here. But getting ready then on the grid for round nine of the year here from the Hungarian Grand Prix. It's five red lights, and it's lights out, and away we go. Off to a pretty cautious start. They're the only person on the hard tyres there. Is there three, four wide? So we head down in towards turn one. Everyone jockeying for position. We'll have a look to the outside in towards turn one. See if we can have a look past a couple of people. At the very least, no. Big kick a wheel spin on the exit of turn one there. And that's going to put us still down in last place. There is Mazepin almost into the back of his team. And Mick Schumacher here. We've got to build up some heat in these hard tyres before we start pushing them all too much at the start of this Grand Prix. They're still side by side. Got a lot of cars out of the first sector here through turn four. Everyone Constantina and up just a little bit more there. It's around the outside of Maspin now. We'll have a look. See if we can maintain some speed around the outside of the house. No, all over the curbing there. Whoa. Don't want to go for the move there. Apologies. Just was a bit worried about how early Maspin had broke, but not a great start then to this race. Struggling a bit with the balance of the car. Fingers crossed we can settle down, get these hards working and make some moves. End of lap one, though. Lewis Hamilton still leads the way here as we try and make some gains on the Keita Mazepin. Definitely have got a little bit more top-end speed than the Haas. Oh, we've got yellow flags out. Someone's got issues. It's Valtteri yellow Bottas. Flags. The Mercedes has once again gone up there. The TP had the issues last weekend, so I don't know if they brought an upgrade that isn't working. But Bottas and Williams, more reliability woes. A little bit closer to Mazepin. You can use it when within one second of the car ahead and in the DRS zone. Up the inside on the key to man spin back down in towards turn one there. A cheeky little send. We'll hang him out to dry. And we're now making some progress. Already getting the sense that this Grand Prix is going to be a little bit of a slow burner. You never know at Hungary. Crazy things can happen later on. Have now finally gone to the DRS though of Mick Schumacher. But of course he's on soft tyres. There's Sykes already into the pits. Not too sure what's happened to the Ferrari. But clearly he's picked up some damage somewhere. Hopefully we can look past the other hats soon. It certainly just wasn't a slightly early call from Carlos. Likes to go for a bit of an undercut on people there. He must have picked up some damage in this Grand Prix because no one's in at the end of lap six here. We've got a good run, though, on Mick Schumacher. Oh, 
That was a big dive. But you kind of got to here at Hungary. Mick will get the undercut on us on the exit. Or the switchback even, I should say. But down the hill, we've still got the inside. Surely now we'll just hang him out to dry there. Mick Schumacher not give it up on this, though. Just like we saw with him versus Verstappen. But we have pulled off the move now. And finally making a little bit more progress. Next up, we got both of the Alphas. Hamilton into the pits as well as a whole host of other cars. Seconds. We are going to come out ahead of Charles Leclerc. And that's just brought back memories of last year trying to battle out with the front runners. But Charles on hards as well. So these guys are going to really try and go deep now into the Grand Prix. Probably go mediums at the end or maybe another set of softs. Unless, of course, they can somehow stretch the rubber. But brings us up into 11th there, right on the cusp of the points. And come to the end of lap 8, even more cars into the pit lane here. Not sure what strategy Science has gone with. But it's brought them quite nicely up the order here. Sonoda's heading back out of the pit lane. He's made good progress as well. He might be ahead of his teammate Lewis Hamilton now in at this Grand Prix there. And yeah, I think Sonoda is. Sonoda, I, I think currently now in net P3, maybe net P2 again. Not really too sure what Sykes is doing, but Ferrari looked to have some mega pace this weekend. Don't really want to hold up Charles Leclerc too much in this Grand Prix. Still, of course, yet to win a Grand Prix for Ferrari in this series, whereas Sykes obviously has won two for them. But also, we've got our own race to play. And these guys aren't getting close enough back towards Turn 1. Well, so Nicholas Latifi is starting to cause a bit of a train here. He's got both Alphas, myself, both Ferraris, and the Mercedes of Yuki Sonoda now stuck in his traffic there. But the Haas, I think, of Mick Schumacher is sort of doing the same as well. A little bit further back there with uh, Lewis Hamilton and both of the McLarens, as well as a smattering of other cars. It could change up the order here. I'm looking at the Alpine and the Aston Martin out towards the front. Could that be Esteban Ocon and Sebastian Vettel? Are we getting some deja vu here? Not sure just yet, but fingers crossed we can stick close to Geo through the final couple of corners here. We need to be within about two tenths down towards Turn 1 if we want to make a move here. These halves though, are certainly coming into their own at this stage of the stint. There we drop the gap back down to about four tenths yeah, over the line. But we've got much better top end speed. Seconds. Teammate a few seconds up the road. Up the inside of Geo we go. That one was a lot better. That was beautiful, if I do say so myself there. Slotted it on the apex. We've allowed Charles Leclerc to sneak by as well. Then maybe Sainz is also going to get through. I think he has. So Gio losing three spots in one go. Hate to see it for him, but pretty proud of that little send. Hopefully we can do the same now. Come on then, Lungard. Let's see if we can do the same again. Repeat the feat to the young Danish driver here. We're a little bit further back this time around. I don't think we're going to be close enough to go for a send. I'll have a look. Not quite close enough this time round to go for anything on Christian. Former teammate, of course, but yeah, just a little bit more cautious. Don't want to do anything stupid. Right, come on then, Christian. Let's see if we can stick a bit closer this time round. Charles Leclerc must be getting so fed up behind all this. But the missile down the straights is coming in clutch once more here. This weekend as we head through the final corner. Trying to ease on the power on the exit there. Oh, Lungard kicks out the back end ever so slightly. We are going to be a whole lot closer this time round as we head back down in towards turn one there. Latifi should be a lot easier to overtake as well afterwards. And we've pulled off the same move again. You love to see it there. Surely people have got to start defending the inside from us. As again, Charles Leclerc is going to slot in behind. He might be getting frustrated, but we're enabling him to make some progress still. Like I said, Latifi should be a lot easier to overtake because he's got no DRS to defend himself with. So fingers crossed almost we don't do anything stupid. We'll get all over the back of the Haas. Uh, the Haas? The Williams, even. Through the final couple of corners here. What are we going to be able to do against Nick? Through the final corner. A little bit wide, a little bit understeery, but we are going to be still within half a second over the line. Should make good gains on the Williams. And look at the top end speed there. Latifi, first man to go defensive on us. Back down towards turn one, but it shouldn't make much of a difference there. Clean around the outside we go. Get much straighter power on the exit. You activate the DRS around the outside, but Latifi, unlike anyone else... Has been able to defend himself from Charles Leclerc for at least one more lap. We're trying to close down our teammate Schwartzman now, as this was never going to be a particularly great track for us. Obviously, I think we've just been coming in clutch because of the fresh power the unit. Ahead is seconds. That's not the line through Turn 4. But yeah, it was always going to be a tough weekend for us. This track does not suit the car. And obviously, without a fresh power unit, Schwartzman, yeah, clearly having a bit of a lonely one. Oh, Alonso into the pit lane here. So it wasn't Ocon and Vettel up front like we saw in real life. It was actually Stroll and Alonso battling it out for the lead of the Grand Prix. But Alonso is the first to blink. He should be in a pretty good position still. The likes of Latifi still holding these guys up there as there is Fernando Alonso. Don't think he's going to quite hang on to it, but he's going to be way up the order than he was. 
big weekend for Alpine potentially. And there we go, Schwarzman and Lance Stroll as well into the pits at the end of the next lap. So we have gone from last to first in oh, this Grand Prix. Makes me wonder though, just how we'll little laps extra. You'll be on the mediums. Yeah, just wondering when we'll need to pit onto the mediums even. If these guys are on half race distance and with heavy fuel, surely we could pit now and come out pretty well. You know what? We're going to box the end of this one, I think. Where is the pit box? Uh, where is box? Oh, it's right at the top, isn't it? Right, come in at the end of this lap. Probably shouldn't have done it through all the twisty bits, but I'm impressed with how well everyone else has been able to make their mediums work. So we may as well try and take a little bit of extra track position and face the pain right towards the end of the Grand Prix. If it gets that stage through the final corner. In towards the pit lane. Gotta remember the pit line is a lot later now on F1 2021. Or a lot... No, it is a lot later. I thought it was a lot earlier then for a very brief moment. Not a fan of the pit lane entry here at the Hungaro ring there. But we are going to come back out outside of the points, unfortunately. Obviously quite a few positions outside of the points. Hamilton all the way down in 10th. Not been his Grand Prix so far. But fingers crossed, second half of this. We still should be very, very quick. Hopefully we can fight our way through. 3.1 is awful from the team as well. Now, where are we going to come back out? Okay, stay clear of the white line on the exit. We'll receive a penalty for dangerous driving if you cross over into the track. P16, so haven't made much progress, but we have got past all the back markers still. Uh, let's just see if we can try and fight our way towards the points. Hasn't taken us long for all over the back of Guan Yu Zhou. But again, the Alpha Tower is going to be much, much more difficult to try and get past down this straightaway Keep in the slipstream. Manage your tyres. Really trying to use a lot of this rubber early on. We're going for a big old send. Love that. Absolutely love that. Guan Yu Zhou, get relegated to P16, mate. Now all over the back of Esteban Ocon. One lap later, as we have got, I'm guessing that's Sainz back into the pit lane once more in this race. I think Sainz, though, will stay ahead of us here. It's going to be mighty close, actually. Yeah, look at that. There's Carlos Sainz. Up the inside of Ocon, though. We'll slide it down the middle there. All gets a bit congested through turn one. Sainz might try and look for a run on the exit there on Esteban. To the outside he goes. We're now trying to focus on our teammate in front there. And I think Sainz has pulled off the move. Has he done so? No, I think Ocon might have held on to it. Uh, nope, Sainz has pulled it off. GG's. Now we need to try and get past our teammate though. Maybe some multi-21 coming in. To be honest, once we've got past our teammate Schwarzman here, I might let Sainz try and drag us along for a few laps. Because he might well be the quickest car on track. At this stage of the day, and I may as well use some DRS and some lines off him later on in this Grand Prix. Can we get a run on our teammate Schwartzman though first out of the final corner? Sainz is staying pretty close to us as well. As we head back down towards turn one there. Oh, Schwartzman, don't do this, buddy. Come on, just let me through. We don't need to fight it. Ron, completely different strategies, mate. But we have pulled off the move. Now we've got to try and run away before Sainz applies the pressure. Pace feels pretty good in the car at the moment as we've got 12 to go. Let's see. Oh, Sainz. Holy moly. Yeah, Sainz is quick. Um, Norris ahead. Okay. Gap ahead is 3.2 seconds. They're on old hearts. Their tyres are 14 laps old. The time last lap was a 117.2. You're gaining by a full second per lap. Good job. Yeah, love to hear it. One second a lap on Sainz and... Oh, sorry. Gasly and Norris even. But I think they might have to pit again. I think they're on an alternate strategy to a lot of people. I think they both made the top 10, so they're going to have to pit once more in this race. So points might be a possibility here. All right, come on then, Sainz. Just get past me here, buddy. The car behind is catching you by five tenths a lap. Five tenths. There you go, Carlos. Not going to fight it. Apparently, I am accidentally going to fight it as we go pretty brave on the brakes. But yeah, we'll use Carlos to try and drag us along. Unless, of course, we lose DRS instantly. I said that if we lose the one second gap as a bit of a joke. But unfortunately, it's become reality instantly. Sainz two seconds up the road after one lap. He is a man on a mission. Well, Sainz now really seems to be struggling to try and get past the McLaren of Lando Norris. The race-winning McLaren of Lando Norris, I must add, of course, after the craziness that was the British Grand Prix last time round. But doesn't look like any of these guys are going to try and pit towards the end. Seems like they're all going to try and really stretch our soft, hard one-stop here, which is fair play to them. But not good for us, because we might have to make some moves on track. Five laps to go then here from Hungary. We've got four different cars with four different power units all squabbling over one solidary point. Didn't think I'd be battling this hard with a Ferrari and a McLaren for points, or a single point even, at this stage of the game. But here we are nonetheless. Can we get a run out of the final corner 
on Carlos Sainz. I think the answer this time around is most certainly no. So we head back down towards cell one here. But Sainz, though, just isn't being aggressive enough. Remaining. These guys are on dead hard tyres in front of him. And Sainz just isn't making any moves. I don't know why. Perhaps he's, perhaps he's too chummy still with his old teammate Lando Norris. Doesn't want to upset him. But we're more than happy to make... Well, not enemies on this series. But certainly I, I won't worry too much if we're taking off Sainz's Christmas card list with five to go. I fear that Sainz is definitely going to be the most difficult one to try and get round here. With just a few laps to go of this Hungarian Grand Prix. Again, we'll roll the car out the final corner. We'll lose a little bit of ground as now Sainz trying to get a little bit closer to Lando Norris. Back down towards Turn 1. Up the inside of Carlos we go with a big lock up from the Ferrari. He still tries to turn in on me. Despite the fact we're there. A little bit of wheel to wheel contact between us. But we have pulled off a crucial move at this stage of the race. And I'm sure, yes, yeah, Sainz not happy with that after we let him through earlier on. But if you're not going to make overtakes, mate, we're going to have to try and get on our own race. Next up, Lando Norris. Oh, Gasly! Oh! <laughs> Gasly just completely dropped it in front of us, seemingly out of nowhere. With a few laps to go with this Grand Prix, and now Lando Norris is going to have no DRS to defend himself with. Out of the final corner. What was that from Gasly? Clearly the hard tyres have completely hit the cliff as we head back down towards Tel Mon there, but not close enough this time on Lando to make anything work. But surely now we're two to go. Lando's going to be a sitting duck in that Macca. Rather worrying him now with two laps to go. I wonder if uh, Lando Norris had just sort of been held back by Pierre Gasly at this stage of the Grand Prix. So perhaps Pierre spinning has done more damage than good for us at this stage of the race. No idea what's happened to Schwartzman, why his pace has fallen off late on. But yeah, Norris now seems to just have a little bit of the afterburners on. Got to have to really hang with him this lap if we want to try and make anything work. Really pushing now with just two to go, well, lap to go even, I should say, now with the Hungarian Grand Prix. Are we going to be close enough to Lando Norris out of this final corner to make anything work here? It's going to be a drag race back down towards Turn 1. I'm well aware of that, Jeff, as we head out the final corner. New PB. Are we going to be close enough back down towards Turn 1? The gap comes down to three tenths of a second. We make even more gains in the braking zone, but not close enough to make a move there. Can we get a run out of Turn 1? Down the hill. In towards turn two here on Lando Norris. Again, got really late on the brakes. We try to have a look around the outside, but nothing working there either. And it doesn't look like it's going to be possible. What happened? Let me know you're okay. Oh my god. The final lap of the race there. We just. Just getting caught on the outside curb. Oh, that's heartbreaking. Our second DNF in a row there. That is well and truly heartbreaking. Luckily, I mean, this time round, yeah, we, I don't think we were going to be able to make anything work on that final lap. But the bottle job right at the end of the race there. Battling so hard against Lando Norris, trying to make it work there. And unfortunately, we've paid the ultimate price. Like I said, wanted to do anything... To try and get that last point out of the car there. But Sainz is going to move up to 11th. And that is us out of the Hungarian Grand Prix. That's a fantastic performance from Ferrari. It hardly looked in doubt. Anthony, tell me. What was it that helped them achieve this success? Well, they certainly stood out as a driver with tons of confidence on the track. I think their ability to keep their cool, even during some of the more hectic parts of the race, meant they were able to capitalise on the mistakes of other drivers, giving them the opportunity to make their way to the top spot with ease. Ferrari are at it again. An excellent performance at today's Grand Prix. And they're certainly a team that know what they're doing out there.
Let's have a quick look at how the driver standings have changed. Despite the best efforts of our championship leader, that lead has taken a bit of a knock today. Now, let's discuss, Ants. Who would you say is a contender for driver of the day? Lance Stroll certainly put in an impressive performance today. No doubt his team and fans are extremely proud. It's time to check out the constructors' standings. Mercedes continue to extend their lead. Well, that was certainly an incredible weekend of racing. Be sure to join myself and Ant for more exciting Formula One action soon. Well, you hate to see it right at the end of the Grand Prix there. Like I said, pushing hard, trying to get that final points pay position off Lando Norris there. And Sainz, Sainz somehow managed it anyway. How on earth did Sainz pull that off on the final lap of the Grand Prix? Yeah, gutted, gutted with that. But I mean, we had a brilliant race. Up to that point there, and hopefully, yeah, that final half a lap there. The bottle job by me, it's come back. Bottle 2-1-2 uh, is once more there. But Charles Leclerc, finally a race winner for Ferrari once more there. After not winning the Grand Prix since, what, the 2019 Italian GP. Two and a half years, well, near enough three years, yeah, without a win in uh, Formula 1 there for the Monogast driver. But he is back on top of the Formula 1 world once more there. Yuki Tsunoda P2 finally flying the flag for Mercedes a little bit more as we head into the summer break there. Verstappen third ahead of Stroll and George Russell there for Aston Martin. Two big hauls of points for Aston there ahead of ourselves. Alonso sixth ahead of Perez. Hamilton all the way down in eighth there. A disappointing day by him. Ricardo in ninth and Sainz, like I said, picking up that final points man position there with the fastest lap as well. You love to see it. For the Spaniard there. Lando just missed out ahead of Gansley there. Schwartzman in like we said in No Man's Land this weekend. Still quicker than the back markers. But just didn't quite have the pace to hang on with the midfield runners there. And we do get classified at the end of the race there. But all the way down in P21 there. Just Valtteri Bottas not making it to the checkered flag there. Means championship wise Hamilton's gap doesn't really get knocked back too badly there. Still 64 points. At the top of the standings, they're ahead of Max Verstappen, who re-inherits P2 there. Charles Leclerc up to P3, now tied with Daniel Ricciardo there. A few points ahead of Lando Norris and Yuki Tsunoda there. Sainz, despite the good recovery, down into 7th place there. No other movers, though, further down the order by the looks of it. Seems that everyone else has held position there. Championship-wise, though, yeah, Aston Martin now 20 clear of ourselves as well. You don't like to see it. Aston are a very, very quick team, though. Uh, so, fingers crossed, you know, we can definitely hold on again of Alpha Tauri. And Alpine at the end of the year as well. But yeah, the gap in the Drivers' Championship actually bigger uh, than the gap in the Constructors there. Goes to show the dominance of Lewis Hamilton at this stage of the year there. But just gutted to loop it round on that final lap. Just got caught out over the curbs. And unfortunately put pay to what could have been a dramatic end to the Grand Prix there. But thank you all so much for watching this video nonetheless. If you have enjoyed, do make sure you leave a like. Get yourself subscribed as well. And yeah, we'll be back tomorrow ready for the Belgian Grand Prix. It should be a track that suits the car a lot more. Looking forward to Belgium and Monza. Of course, we've got Zandvoort in between. But yeah, we'll be back very, very soon. Ready at Spa. You guys do not want to miss it. None of these videos would be possible without the support of our channel members. So a massive thank you to the Travesty, Patrick, Chuan, David Bennett, Ben Meekins, and Aiden C97 for becoming channel members. If you want to be featured in these little um, clips, click the join button down below.